Megan, we're here in the Winslow Auditorium, named after our illustrious founder, CEA Winslow. And as I sit here, where I did 56 years ago as a new student, I can't help but wonder what Winslow would have thought if he could visualize and knew about the achievements we've had after he, he retired and the next sort of 100 years. What, what do you think, Winslow? I think he'd be tremendously proud to see what we've done over the last century plus. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at some of the historical and really important achievements of the school. The Yale School of Public Health traces its roots back over a century to 1915 under the leadership of Charles Edward Amory Winslow. In 1920, CEA Winslow defined public health shaping its future. His comprehensive framework still inspires the field today. In 1946, the department earned recognition as a nationally accredited school of public health, making Yale's program one of the oldest accredited public health schools in the country. In 1964, the Rockefeller Foundation moved its viral labs from New York to Yale funding much of the Laboratory of Epidemiology and Public Health's construction. This move established the Yale Arbovirus Research Unit, attracting leading global experts in arthropod-borne virus infections, including Max Thaler, who received a Nobel Prize for his work developing a yellow fever vaccine. In 1974, the Yale Cancer Center opened as one of the first National Cancer Institute-designated comprehensive cancer centers, since then, it has been recognized as a national leader in cancer research, prevention, detection, and treatment. Diagnosis-related groups, or DRGs, were developed by Yale faculty to categorize ailments to standardize hospital cost and care efficacy. Adopted by Medicare in 1982, DRGs set fixed fees, reducing average U.S. hospital stays and promoting more efficient treatment now a global standard. In the late 1980s, as AIDS devastated the U.S., activists and Yale public health researchers in New Haven proposed a radical solution, a government-run clean syringe program for drug users. Despite initial opposition, by 1990, Connecticut authorized New Haven's needle exchange program, saving countless lives and inspiring similar initiatives nationwide. Established in 1997, the Center for Interdisciplinary Research on AIDS, CIRA, unites faculty from 16 disciplines and 11 departments throughout Yale. CIRA supports innovative interdisciplinary research to advance HIV prevention and treatment and eliminate health disparities. Founded in 2007 at the Yale School of Public Health, the Community Alliance for Research and Engagement, CARE, is now co-housed at Southern Connecticut State University and YSPH. It focuses on improving health in New Haven among people most impacted by disparities through collaborative research, practice, and engagement. In 2020, Yale School of Public Health experts significantly influenced COVID-19 response efforts. They contributed to Connecticut's Vaccine Advisory Committee, assisted New Haven with contact tracing, and played a key role in national advisory groups, including a White House task force on health equity. And now that brings us to 2024, when for the first time in our nearly 110 years of existence, we are a fully independent self-support school at Yale. I've been here for only a year. I have long respected the tremendous legacy and history of this school, but our transition into independence acknowledges our scientific significance, our societal significance, and it really takes the ceiling off of what's possible as we try to live up to CEA Winslow's legacy and continue to define what public health means, how we study it, how we teach it, and how we practice it. Independence provides that opportunity for us to change the field of public health for the next century in the same way that CEA Winslow set us up to change things last century.